Hi, this is Yarik, and today I'm going to talk about running a Windows 10 virtual machine inside FreeNAS. This comes up on the forums now and then, people are having trouble with it. The, this uh, boils down to typically three issues. One, using the wrong drivers. Two, not having enough memory. And then three, uh, potentially using VNC instead of RDP to connect to it. If that gave you everything you needed, then you can stop watching this video. Otherwise, uh, bear with me. Let's take a look. Let's start with memory. <coughs> and you see here in my system, I have one gig or so free. That's obviously not enough, right? So I'm going to create a tunable to reduce this CFS cache. We're going to say um, for Windows VM, we're going to give it eight gig. I think four is about the minimum, but let's do eight and give it some space to live in. I'm going to go to system tunables. Um, it's going to be this one right here. vfs.zfs.arc underscore max in uh, TrueNAS 12. This will be arc.max. Uh, set it to a value of uh, 20 gig in my case. So that's uh, 12 below what I have physically installed. So I have four for system and eight for Windows. Okay, save that. And I'm going to reboot this. and take a look at what else we need in the meantime. We know Windows 10 ISO. You get this here from Microsoft, I'll have the link, and just download the installation media tool and follow the steps here to create an ISO file. And then secondly, you need the vert.io drivers. So I'm gonna use vert.io, we're gonna get these from Fedora, ready-made, signed, so it's easy to use. Just this stable vert.ia win ISO here will do. And stick those in a folder somewhere on FreeNAS in my case. Well, obviously not there now because I'm rebooting in my, so I want these in a folder on FreeNAS so they're available to the um, virtual machine creation. Okay, I'm gonna pause and come back when FreeNAS is there again. All right, and I'm back. Uh, You'll just have to believe me that the Arc Max is now 20 gig because obviously we just started and so we got everything free. All right, let's go create a Windows 10 virtual machine. Again, to repeat, the only things we're going to make care of, uh, take care of is that we're going to use the virt.io drivers, have enough memory and switch to RDP once we're done. That may give you all you needed. So I'm going to do Windows. <clears throat> let's just call this Win 10. UEFI, yes, do not start and boot. We do want VNC and I'm going to delay the boot um, because I need to hit a few keys to boot from CD-ROM. I had two vert CPUs, why not give it eight gig? Um, I actually have a disk image in this case. We want the vert IO disk type. There's my Windows 10. You would create new here. Make sure to select vert IO and uh, create your um, Zwall. In my case, I'm doing, uh, I think, 120 gig or so. Again, adapter type here, not Intel. We're going to do vert.io and attach it to my NIC, which I only have one of. Installation media. This is what I prepared earlier, so it's going to be in shared ISOs. And this is going to be my Windows ISO. Next. And submit that. And now we're going to create a uh, device, a CD-ROM. I'm going to grab the vert.io drivers and make them available to the installer. So there they are, save that. Okay, all set. Let's go start that and see what we get. I right, use the web VNC here, be lazy. Press any key. That's why I had it wait for VNC before it booted. All right, let's go through the initial Windows install. I'll pause it once we get going for real. Just want to show you how to get the drivers in. All right, set to your language, time, keyboard, in my case, all US. Install now. All right. Um, I'm going to skip this here. You would enter your product key in here, but I'm going to skip just in the interest of time. Uh, 
and we're going to accept the license. Install Windows only. All right, now I don't have my uh, disk, my Zvol. So let's load a driver. Yep, we understand that we need to do that. And here it is. You see we got 2K8, Win10, and Win7. So we're going to use the Win10 one. And these have been signed by Red Hat, so this should all be fine. And there we go. In your case, this is going to be empty. I had previous attempts um, of testing this. So in my case, you know, I'm going to just use this guy right here. Go next. And yep, I'm going to do that. And now it's just a Windows install. I'm going to pause and come back when we're done. And here we are back. A couple notes on this. Uh, it restarts a couple times. When it does, you will need to reconnect VNC, so it actually boots. Remember, we had this set to um, not boot until VNC is connected. And then secondly, during the setup, Windows will say, oh, I want to get you online. And of course, that doesn't work because we have the Vert.io uh, Ethernet and no driver for it yet. So just tell it I don't have internet, skip all that stuff, we'll do it after. So that's what we're going to do now. Um, enable network connection, enable RDP, and then shut it down, kill the VNC, get rid of the CD-ROMs, and start it back up. So right-click here, going to go to Device Manager. And I have my Ethernet controller, which is not working, so we're going to update the driver on this. This is actually the net KVM driver, so I want to browse. I still have the CD drive in here, so I'm going to go to net KVM, and then we're in Windows 10 and it's AMD64 and say OK. And next, that's going to search that and tell me it wants to install. As you can see, this is um, signed, which is great, so I'm going to say always trust that and install it. Okay, wonderful. And now I have an Ethernet adapter up and running. Um, sure, this is my home network, so I might as well say yes, we're going to be discoverable just like any other Windows 10 machine. Close that out here. We're just going to quickly enable. Uh, RDP. So I'm going to go to settings. And then system. And remote desktop. I'm going to turn that on. Indeed, I do want to do that. Okay, so that's great. Um, one more thing. I created my user as a um, local non-Microsoft user. I'm going to change that. So let's go to accounts. And say I want to sign in with a Microsoft account instead. I'll come back when that's done. And now I'm just going to quickly check that RDP is actually working. So I'm going to go here to my um, Ethernet connection, my network. Say network and internet settings. Wait for that to load. Side note, this is all remarkably slow. Um, my understanding is this will be faster in TrueNAS 12 core. But uh, the nightly right now is actually crashing on this. So I can't show it there. So here we are. In our network profile, just scroll down. That's the IP address that was assigned by DHCP. So let's see that I can get there. And yep, we know we don't.
trust the certificate. That's going to take its own sweet time here. Okay, that's looking good. So I do have my remote desktop connection here. That's working. So I'm going to shut this down. And right here, shut down. And I'm going to remove the, uh, yep, don't care. I'm going to remove the um, VNC and the CD-ROMs that we don't need. So over here to FreeNAS. And it's currently um, actually shut down. So I'm going to power it off and look at the devices. I'm going to get rid of the VNC device, delete that. Yes, indeed. I'm going to get rid of both CD-ROMs, both the um, install and the driver CD-ROM. Delete those and then just start it back up and reconnect with RDP, see that that works and I'll pause and come back when that's done. And that worked great. I'm back in. Now I can you know, assign a license to this thing, give it a better name than desktop something something and uh, see what else I want to do with it. As for performance, well, uh, I'll retest on TrueNAS Core 12, but in 11.3, it certainly is not the fastest. Well, that's all there is to getting a Windows VM running on FreeNAS. So thank you for your time.